Good morning, everyone. The Lord be with you. <laughs> All right. Yes. Today's um, sermon title is No Longer Slaves to Sin. Okay. But let me begin my message today with a song video, which is called The River. So after we watch the song video, I'll continue my message today. Thanks again. Thanks, Ian. Thanks, Bell. Thanks, Harry. What do you think? I believe the words of the song reminds us of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We reflected on several weeks ago, as well as what Lindsay shared with us last Sunday. I believe where the river of God runs, where the streams of living water flow, there is healing, there is peace, there is joy, and there is freedom. The invisible, but the gracious work of the Holy Spirit, who searches the deepest parts of our hearts, flows like a river and gives life to dry and parched souls and restores daily what's supposed to be there in the first place. As we briefly talked about the Ezekiel's vision a couple of weeks ago, the water flowing from the presence of the Lord gradually filled up the river, starting from ankle deep and progressing to the knee deep and then waist deep. Everywhere the water touched, it brought life and vitality. If we apply to that image of that river in the Ezekiel's vision, to our spiritual context, becoming alive would probably mean that we become who we are, whom God has created us to be. In other words, it means living in the state of enjoying every moment that God has given us, and also being grateful in the presence of God. The state of having no desire to compare with others or to compete for more of personal gain or not feeling anxious for not getting what we want or not feeling empty for not being attached to anything. The state of freedom. How do we define it? How do you define it? Fully engaged, but not too attached. Present, but not restricted. With and among people, but at the same time, enjoying solitude. Looking needy, but satisfied. Practical, while having emotional and spiritual space for others. Carrying a busy life, but knows when to stop and how to find rest. Many world religions and spiritual practices seem to talk a lot about this state of freedom, promising to help people to reach that state which many in the world are yearning to find. Considering the challenges and pressures people face in this time and age, having a sense of freedom from whatever we think discourages us might be one of the top wish list items. What is freedom? What is freedom? What image comes to your mind when you think of a person 
who are free from whatever keeps him or her from being who the person really is. What sort of image can you think of? <laughs> Maybe like this, <laughs> Harley Davidson <laughs> on a rural road. <laughs> I'd like to give you one minute, just one minute, to talk about this freedom. How do you define freedom? What freedom means to you? With person sitting next to you or behind you, just one minute, no more than one minute. Think about it. Oh, you might like to share an image of someone who are completely free. <laughs> Just one minute. Yes, please, let's do it. All right, 10 seconds. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm sure that there are many different answers to that question, what freedom is. Let us listen to what Paul says in his letter to the believers in Corinth. I believe this particular passage would help us to somehow understand what freedom in our Christian context means. He talks about some diverse context and also diverse people whom he had, a, he had come across in his life and shares his experience with the community of faith in Corinth. And it's really fascinating to see how he has handled those moments which would have been very conflicting situations in his life. And he also explains where his strength came from in dealing with those challenges. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 19 to 27. Let me read it for you. Even though I'm a free man with no master, I've become a slave to all people to bring many to Christ. When I was with the Jews, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. When I was with those who followed the Jewish law, I too lived under that law. Even though I am not subject to the law, I did, it, I did this so I could bring to Christ those who are under the law. When I am with the Gentiles who do not follow the Jewish law, I too live apart from that law so I can bring them to Christ. But I do not ignore the law of God. I obey the law of Christ. When I am with those who are weak, I share their weakness, for I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessings. Hmm. So what do you think? What do you think? Do you understand what Paul is trying to say? to the people in Corinth as well as us this morning. He doesn't seem to want to put himself in a certain religious, cultural, or social group, while at the same time regarding himself as one of those who are in that particular group. I'm not a slave, but I become a slave. When I'm with the Jews, I live like a Jew. I'm, I'm, when I'm with the Gentiles, I live like a Gentile person. 
I'm not subject to the law, but I live as if I'm under the law. When I'm with those who are weak, I share their weakness. I live like one of them. What is he talking about? Verse 19 and 20 and 22, 23. His approaches to building relationships and engaging with others seem to be grounded on one principle. Verse 19, he says, to bring many to Christ. Verse 20, to bring Jews to Christ. Verse 20 again, so I could bring to Christ those who are under the law. Verse 21, so I can bring them to Christ. Verse 22, to bring the weak to Christ. Doing everything I can to save them. In verse 23, I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessings. Can you see the same word recurring in this passage? Christ, Christ, Christ Jesus and the good news. He keeps talking about it. It seems that when his heart is filled with Christ, the religious cultural, social, or political differences, which often divide people, putting them in different camps of any kind, don't affect him much with regards to who he is, where he belongs, and what he is trying to achieve. Rather, he chooses to be like those who only know their religion, their culture, their group, their circle, their side, so that he might have a language and access to their lives and let them know there's way more, way better, way higher than what they think they have. He wants to be among them to present himself and to share what he has discovered in his life. The same person he only knew about who only knew about the Jewish law and culture, so rejected and persecuted and killed everyone who were different from him, different to him. But the same person who found the one who opened his completely blind eyes to see the river of God, the streams of living water, who freed him from his own religious shackles, sin, guilt, and shame. He also wants to be with those who are weak in body, mind, or spirit. He wants to be with those who are losing hope and purpose in their lives because of physical illness, mental issues, or spiritual difficulties. As Christ Jesus has been patient with his pride, his arrogance, his judgment, and his self-righteousness, he chooses to be present in their dark moments, in their struggles, in their brokenness, in order to be Christ's merciful and forgiving presence for them. He doesn't seem to be confined to anybody or anything in the world, but to Christ Jesus. Confined to his power to his profound grace, and confined to the unlimited freedom in Christ Jesus, and confined to most generous gift of choice of becoming like those who need Christ, who need the river of God, who, who cannot be revived without the healing touch of the streams of living water. Like Paul, all of us here who put our trust in Jesus Christ, we are no longer slaves to sin. We are no longer slaves to shame and guilt. And we are no longer slaves to our past. And we are no longer slaves to our mistakes and wrongs we have done. And we are no longer slaves to the world's expectations and judgments on us. 
the one and only Son of the living God, who created heavens and the earth, has eternally given us victory over those things on the cross and in the tomb. So let us live a life as a freed person. And let us live our life which reflects that amazing grace. And let us try to be like others who might be different to us, as the Apostle Paul did to bring them to Christ. And let us be the presence of Christ Jesus to those whom God has placed in our lives. Please do not underestimate your presence among people. The Lord might use you as his channel of of his love and mercy. Do not feel discouraged by the slow change or the delayed answer from God because you belong to him. You are a child of God and your name is written on his palm. Your calming presence might be used as a channel of our Lord's saving and healing grace for the people in your life, regardless of their religions, cultures, sexual orientations, mental challenges, or political preferences, or any other man-made categories. Because the love of Christ who lives in you is way above than those differences. Christ's freedom is in you and me. So let us use it and share it and preach it. Let us listen to Paul's words of exhortation to us right after the passage that we just read, verses from 24 to 27. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run? but only one gets the prize. Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in that games, in the games, goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave, so that after I've preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Amen. So brothers and sisters in Christ, let us run the race, and let us continue to run the race and finish it. And let us keep the freedom that Jesus gave us and share it and flow it to others in our lives. Amen. We're going to sing um, the two songs to finish my message. And the first song is the song that we watched at the beginning of my message, The River. And then we're going to sing the after song is In Christ Alone. <laughs> okay. Thank you.